All right, I'm here to do some practice problems with monohybrid crosses. Uh, and in this, we're going to continue to assume uh, Mendelian traits and complete dominance as we walk through and do them. So uh, we did these in class and you walked through, but I just want to make sure that uh, you've got a resource where we can go through and look at all of them. So number one, in humans, brown eyes are dominant over blue eyes. What type of offspring would you expect if you were to cross a heterozygous, and remember these are the words we're looking for, a person with another heterozygous. So heterozygous, it doesn't matter what we choose. I'm going to use the letter B, so big B, little b, big B, little b, and we're going to make our cross. So this is the Punnett square that we're going to end up with. And remember, as we do the Punnett square, the way that we're filling these in is that this is translating in each spot. So Nat's going in there. So this is tying back to what we talked about a few units ago, and we're doing this with uh, law of independent assortment and segregation and random fertilization that we have two alleles for that trait, and uh, there's just about any probability and possibility that we're going to get one or the other. So we want to see all of the chances. So what type of offspring would you expect in this? Well, we want to write our genotypic and phenotypic ratios. So genotypes we'd have a 25% chance of homozygous dominant, a 50% chance of heterozygous, and a 25% chance of recessive, which means phenotypically, and then I'll write my G because these are my genotypic ratios, my phenotypic ratios, well, brown eyes, I'm going to expect to see that 75% of the time. Because this genotype, this genotype, and this genotype all show that. And then blue eyes, I'm going to expect to see 25% of the time. Number two, a widow's peak hairline is dominant to a straight hairline. Cross a heterozygous, again, there's our terms we're looking for, with a straight hairline. Now, if it's straight hairline, we can assume that it's recessive, and if it's recessive, we can make the assumption that it's homozygous recessive because when we're assuming complete dominance, then the only way that that recessive trait's going to show up is if both of them are recessive. So we'll cross it here, heterozygous. So we're going to fill this out. Oops, scribble that out, sorry. So if we do the cross, again, we're going to end up with, we want to write our genotypic ratios. 50% of the time we have heterozygous dominant and 50% of the time we have a recessive. Phenotypically, that means that we're going to see a widow's peak 50% of the time. And then, whoop, went, jumped me ahead. And then the other 50% of the time we're going to see straight. So again, premature in humans, premature gray hair is dominant over normal hair coloring. Cross a homozygous premature gray to a homozygous normal hair. Well, if gray is dominant, that homozygous premature gray, and I'm going to use the letter G, is both capital and homozygous normal is both lowercase. Now, we could make the argument that they didn't need to tell us that that was homozygous because the only way that this could even be true is if it's homozygous. So we're going to do our cross. We fill it all the way in. Genotypic ratios. 100% of the time we see that heterozygous, which means phenotypically we're going to see premature gray 100% of the time. In humans, tongue rolling is dominant to non-tongue rolling. What would be the expected type of offspring if a homozygous tongue roller was crossed to a heterozygous tongue roller? So, homozygous tongue roller. Tongue rolling is dominant, which means homozygous is capital, capital. What if they're crossed with a heterozygous tongue roller? Well, that means it's capital in a lowercase. So, we're going to fill our cross in. Now, one thing you may notice when we're doing this, we're always going to put the capital letter first. Um, so genotypically, 50% chance that we're homozygous dominant, 50% chance we're heterozygous, but phenotypically, 
the only thing we're going to see are rollers. So 50, per, or if not 50, 100% chance we see those rollers. Brown hair is dominant over light colored hair across two light haired color people. Two light haired people. So if light hair is the recessive, if I cross them, let's use C, then every offspring is going to have what color hair? Well, every offspring then is going to have the recessive, that homozygous recessive genotype, which means that every offspring is going to have that light hair all the time. In certain plants, yellow fruit is dominant to white. A heterozygous plant with yellow fruit, so we know that, we'll put that in, is crossed with a white fruit plant. So white, recessive. So we've got our cross here. Determine the probable offspring. So if we write this out, our genotypic probabilities capital Y, lowercase y, that heterozygous dominant, 50%, and our, hetero, our homozygous recessive at 50%, which means phenotypically we're going to see yellow fruit, heterozygous yellow, 50% of the time, and we're going to see white fruit 50% of the time as well. So we want to do a couple of crosses here. That's why I didn't put a box in. When we're doing this, if we cross a, oh, sorry, it's a kind of a crummy box I'm drawing. Homozygous black with white. So homozygous black dominant with my lowercase. If we do that, then all of the time what we're going to see is that heterozygous, which means when we do that, we're going to see only that genotype in only black fur. Now let's try and make a better box this time. There we go. So when we do it this time, heterozygous black and heterozygous black. Now we're going to start to see predictable patterns happening. When we do this it's going to be a one to one ratio for the genotypes of one two, one, and then phenotypically it's going to be a three to one ratio. So three black for every one white. Last couple ones here. Uh, round peas are dominant to wrinkled peas. If you cross a homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive, what would the genotype and phenotype of the offspring be? So again, here is my homozygous dominant. Here's my homozygous recessive. So when we cross a homozygous dominant and a homozygous recessive, we always end up with a heterozygous offspring. And if we do that, that means that they're all going to be heterozygous and they're all going to be round. Now, this should sound a lot like the cross that happened in with Mendel. So when Mendel in the P1 generation, he did this homozygous homozygous and then he went to the F1 generation and this is what we saw in the F1 generation. And then when we go beyond that, we get to the F2 generation. So in corn kernels, in corn normal kernels are dominant to waxy. If you crossed a waxy with a heterozygous normal, what type of seeds would be produced? So again, uh, if we cross heterozygous normal, so I'm just going to use K with a, a waxy kernel that's recessive we want to break that down which means 50 percent of the time we're going to end up with heterozygous and 50 percent of the time we're going to end up with homozygous recessive and last one tall plants are dominant to short plants and garden peas cross a heterozygous tall plant to a heterozygous tall again we should know our predictable ratios by this point, especially with heterozygous and heterozygous. This is the F1 cross to the F2 generation. So 25% homozygous dominant, 25% homozygous recessive, and 50% here heterozygous dominant. So uh, if you want to see some of the harder ones, click on the next video and you'll be able to see those.